Okay, so let's continue this problem. Well, we found the nice big red arc, so now we have to find the smaller red arc. So I know that this green arc here, this large green arc, was 180. So 70 plus 60 is 130. What would make that 180? This has got to be 50 degrees. So now let's go ahead and plug those values in. And remember, because the intersection of these two lines is inside the circle, we are adding our red arc lengths. So x equals 1 half times 180 plus 50. 180 plus 50 is, oh, I don't know why that happened. 180 plus 50 is 230. So that's 230 degrees and half of 230 degrees is 115 degrees. Okay, so that we found our X value and our Y value. Okay, so now let's go ahead and find, let's do the next problem. All right, so the next problem almost reminds me of a Pac-Man. Okay, so in this one we're finding segment lengths and not angles. So we're going to use our segment formulas. So we have an intersection point outside of the circle. So we are going to take the outside part times the whole part equals the outside part times the whole part. All right, so let's find the first outside part. The red part was x. What is the whole part? The whole part they tell us is 8. Okay, so now for the other one, um, the blue part is 5. And the whole yellow part, it looks like I have the blue part plus the stuff on the inside. I have to add those two parts up. That's 10. 5 plus 5 is 10. So we end up with 8x equals 50. Well, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. And then I notice that 2 goes into both of these. So I'm going to reduce that and say x equals 25 over 4. Okay, so the next one is um, very similar. So we have, again, we're looking for segments, and I notice that my intersection of these two lines is outside my circle. So this is the outside part times the whole part equals the outside part times the whole part. Okay. So what is the outside part? Well, that's the red that I outlined, that's five. The whole part is the red part plus the inside part. So the whole is five plus seven, that's 12. And that will equal the outside, which is six. And then the whole is gonna be the six plus the C. Six plus C. So we're gonna have to distribute here to solve. Five times 12 is 60. And then 6 times 6 is 36 plus 6c. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 36 from both sides. And I get 24 equals 6c. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And I get c equals 4. All right. Let's move on to the next couple of problems. In the next couple of problems, we're going to be finding the diameter. Okay, so let's locate the diameter in the picture. The diameter goes through the center of the circle and is that. I'm going to call the diameter D. All right, so we have a nice um, two lines that intersect outside of the circle. So it's going to be the outside part times the whole length of this equals the outside part times the whole part. And in this case, it's the same thing. All right, so we have 15, the outside part, 
times the entire length, which is going to be d plus 15. That's going to equal the outside part, which is 25, times the whole thing, which is 25. Okay, the outside and the whole thing is 25. So we're going to have to distribute this. We have 15 times the diameter. 15 times 15 is 225 equals 25 times 25 is 625. So let's subtract 225 from both sides. And we get 15D equals 400. So now I'm gonna have to divide both sides by 15, and I'm not sure if 15 actually goes into 400. I do know I can take out a five from each. So the denominator is e easy. 15 divided by 5 is 3. How many times does 5 go into 40? Well, 5 goes doesn't go into 4, but it does go into 40 eight times. But I still have the 0, so I'll bring it down. So D just happens to be, the diameter happens to be 80 over 3. So we're going to find the diameter in this one as well. Again, the diameter is the line that goes through the center, so we're going to find this whole line. Okay, but we might not be able to do it by solving the problem to begin with. We'll have to look. So I want you to take a look at this. This is a chord from here to here. So that's a nice chord. And it's being intersected by a perpendicular line that goes through the center. That tells me that this perpendicular line, this diameter, okay, is a bisector of this chord. So not only is this part 12, but this part here is 12. Okay, if we didn't have this perpendicular and it didn't go through the center, it would not bisect that chord. So those are the things. It's got to be perpendicular and it has to go through the center of the circle. Okay. So that makes it kind of easy because now I'm just going to call this guy over here, I'm going to call this x, this part, okay? It's not the whole diameter. The diameter is going to be the 9 plus the x. But I have a, right, I have two lines that intersect in the circle. So now I can set up my equation to solve. It's going to be 12 times 12 equals 9 times x. So I have 144 equals 9x. So I'm going to divide both sides by 9, and I get x equals 16. x equals 16. But remember, that's not the, the, the diameter, right? That's not all the way across. It's only from the point of intersection to the outside of the circle. So to find the diameter d, I have to add the 9 plus the 16, and I get a nice 25. So my diameter is 25. All right, so we have a very similar problem here. Okay, so I'm going to, I have a nice right triangle, right? So it just makes me want to solve it. So remember, this is opposite the right angle. That's the hypotenuse. So 17 squared equals 8 squared. Let's just call this x. It's not quite the diameter. It's close, right? x is going to be this part of the diameter. So let's solve for that. Plus x squared. 17 squared is 289 equals 64 plus x squared, and when I subtract 64 from both sides, I get 225 is x squared. So when I take the square root of both sides, I get x equals 15. Okay, so that part is 15. So I'm going to erase the x and write 15 now. So I'm going to show you a nice little trick that we can do. Because this, goes, this line here is the diameter, it goes through the center. I can finish drawing this chord here, and I know that it's this piece must equal this piece, okay? So this has to be eight. So now I can say this part here is y. 
Okay, so now I can use my formulas. I can say 8 times 8, 8 times 8 equals y times 15. y times 15, so 64 equals 15y. I can divide by 15. And y equals, I don't think that reduces because the only factors of 15 are 3 and 5. 3 doesn't go into 64 and 5 doesn't go into 64. So I think my final answer is just 64 fifths. Okay, so that was a nice little trick. I drew in a chord. I completed that chord so I could use my formulas to, to solve. And I don't think I'm done. That was dumb. Okay, so I solve for y. I should unbox my answer here because I did not solve for the diameter. I only solve for y. My diameter goes all the way across. So I not only have 64, let's do that down here. My diameter is going to be 64 fifteenths, but I also have this 15 I have to add to it. So to find a common denominator, I'm going to multiply by 15 over 15. So I get 64 fifteenths plus 225 fifteenths. So my diameter is going to be 289 fifteenths. And now I'm done. I found my diameter. All right. So now let's move on to this last problem. In this one, we're going to just solve for all the missing variables. Hopefully it'll be fairly easy. All right, so I just want to point out here, these are vertical angles. So I know that A is going to equal Y because vertical angles are congruent. So I have two intersecting lines that intersect inside my circle. So I'm going to, to solve for either A or Y, they're equal, I'm going to use the angle, the measure of the angle equals one half. When it's inside your circle, we're going to add the two arcs together. Okay, so I have this arc here and this arc here that I'm adding together. So I'm going to say A equals one half of 60 plus 80. 60 plus 80 is 140, so A equals 70 degrees. And if A equals 70 degrees and A and Y are equal, Y equals 70 degrees as well. Okay, so how do I find B? Well, what do you know about A and B? We don't even need a formula for this because A and B are linear pairs, right? This is a line, so they have to add to 180. So B is going to be 180 minus A. So B is 110 degrees. Come on, eraser. So B equals 110 degrees. There we go. So now I need to solve for what? I did A, B, um, I think X was down here. I forgot to write in X. So let's solve for X. Okay, so I have this part of a line, this part of the line, this part of the line, and this part of the line. And so I'm going to use, this is intersecting inside my circle, so I'm going to say 7 times X equals 6 times 4, 7x equals 24, so when I divide by 7, I get 24 sevenths, okay, so I have x, so now really all I have to do is solve for z, so I have z is on the outside, right, and now these lines intersect on the outside, so I'm going to use a different formula, I'm going to say z squared equals 4 times 4, the outside part times the whole length, which is 6 plus 4 plus 4 is 14. So I get z squared equals 56 
and z is going to be the square root of 56. Um, and I'm 